Um, hi, my name is Elsa Lake, and I'm a sophomore in the college, and I'm studying biology and Chinese. And the plant that I'm presenting today is licorice. Um, the scientific name is uh, Glyceriza glabra L, and it's in the Fabaceae family. A quick overview, um, licorice is uh, it's actually the extract obtained from the root of the plant and uh, the scientific name comes from the Greek word for um, the, the Greek word uh, glucoriza and that means sweet root. Uh, some common names are European licorice, Spanish juice, or sweet wood and it's native to the Mediterranean and um, two closely related species are uh, Chinese licorice and American licorice, and all three of the species, um, can, they all contain uh, glycerizin, which is the main active constituent, constituent and it has a sweet taste. <coughs> um, and then there are many different uses for this plant. Um, major ones are antibacterial, anti-ulcer, and antioxidant. A quick botanical description. Um, the shrub grows to a height of four or five feet, and there are pale white to purplish flowers that actually resemble lilacs. And the fruit is a pod with three to five kidney-shaped seeds. And there's an extensive root system, and the main taproot is soft fibrous, and it has a bright yellow interior. Um, and this is where you get the licorice from. It, thrives best in, in fertile, sandy, or clay soil near a river or stream that is under cultivation, or, or that is under cultiva cultivation where it can be irrigated. Um, and it tends to grow on the flooded uh, fields or the riverbanks of Mediterranean countries, uh, which are in a subtropical climate. And currently, you can find this plant in Spain, Italy, Turkey, um, the Caucasus, the Central Asia, and the western part of China. Um, some traditional uses. Um, every third or fourth year, the main taproot is harvested, and you can prepare a simple aqueous extract just by boiling the root of the plant and letting most of the water evaporate. Um, it was found that in ancient Egyptian tombs, such as that of King Tut, you can find the roots of G. glabra, and it was used by the Egyptians to make a sweet beverage. And this beverage is still made today to honor the pharaohs. In the past, it was used to, um, or it was stored in the tomb so that the pharaoh could make it in the afterlife. Um, the armies of Alexander the Great and the Romans used to carry the root uh, to quench their thirst on long marches if they didn't have uh, enough water to carry. Um, and it was also mentioned in, um, in several texts by, um, it was mentioned by the Greek botanist Theophrastus, and he stated that licorice could be used to quench thirst like as well and to treat asthma, dry cough, and other respiratory diseases. And um, in the uh, Pliny the Elder's Naturalis Historia, he mentioned that it could be used also for reducing hunger and thirst and for treating asthma and sterility in women. Um, during the Middle Ages, um, when knowledge of a lot of these medicinal plants was lost, it was kept alive in the monasteries, um, and it was used as um, a method to treat hypotension. Um, and it's also mentioned in the Chinese Shen Nong Ben Sao Ding, but this is actually um, the Chinese licorice, but since they, the two species share a lot of the same cons constituents, um, it's still, there's still a lot of common properties. Um, uses in food, be food beverages and miscellaneous usage. Um, so to flavor candies, usually use the um, 
or licorice candies consist of extract sugar and a binder. And um, licorice powder is actually a light brown color, contrary to what many consumers believe that is black. And um, many of these black candies are actually flavored with anise seed, seed oil, um, synthetic anisole, or an anethole. Um, and um, the popular candy Twizzlers, the the red kind, the, like the strawberry flavor, is actually well, strawberry flavored. It's not. It doesn't have any licorice in it. Um, but then they do have a a black version that has licorice and the um, the anise seed oil in it. Um, and it's also used to flavor uh, soft soft drinks and herbal teas and various uh, liqueurs. Um, other uses besides as like food, um, G. glaber was cultivated in U uh, Uzbekistan um, so that um, there were a lot of, or there was waterlogged saline soils and this plant was used to keep the water table below a critical level and um, the plant ended up increasing the productivity of wheat and cotton crops. Um, the leftover root has other uses after you extract the licorice, such as it can be boiled with caustic soda to make a stabilizer used in firefighting foam. And it can also be used to make insulation board and a box board. Um, some chemistry. So there's 2 to 15% triterpenoid saponins, and the major one is glycerizin and um, this compound is much, much sweeter than sucrose and um, the, the sweet taste takes longer to be recognized by um, your taste buds, but the, the sweet sensation lasts a lot longer. And um, glabridin is a compound that's specific to this species. So while glycerizin is common to all three of uh, the Chinese, American, and European licorice, this is specific to the European, and it's a polyphenolic flavonoid, or polyphenic flavonoid. Um, some biological activity. So there's a lot of different potential um, uses for licorice, and one of them is <coughs> the um, glycerizin can inhibit the growth and cytopathology of numerous RNA and DNA viruses. <coughs> um, in vitro research with a human hepatoma cell line has shown that um, glycerizin completely suppresses the expression of the um, hepatitis A virus's antigen. And it was also more cell selective by fivefold, so that means that it was less cytotoxic to the human cells. <coughs> um, it's also been shown to um, irreversibly activate herpes simplex virus, and it inhibits viral replication and infectivity of HIV, herpes, zoster, varicella, zoster, and CMV. Um, for anti-inflammatory activity, um, the Glycerizin and glabridin inhibit the generation of reactive oxygen species, and um, this can this can help prevent cancer also because it scavenges the free radicals that can be <coughs> cancer causing. Um, for anti ulcer medications, um, there's a preparation that is created without the glycerizin because at too high of a level it can be toxic. Um, but as in the clinical studies, uh, it was found that it's, um, there, it's not sure if these formulations are effective because um, there was a clinical trial with 96 patients with gastric ulcers and then <laughs> The group given the DGL showed no differences in healing 
um, compared to the placebo group over four weeks. Um, other studies say that it's effective, but it's inconclusive. Um, and then just other clinical studies, like, um, just help to support that it's effective against various viruses. Um, some contraindications. Um, so there's this uh, side effect called um, pseudoaldosteronism, and this is this occurs because uh, glycerizin structure is very similar to the hormones secreted by the adrenal cortex. So um, glycerizin is capable of potentiating the aldosterone action while um, binding to receptors in the kidneys, and this causes high blood pressure, um, potassium loss, and uh, sodium retention. Um, and then there are also drug interactions. So um, one should be careful if they're taking hydrocortisone, um, prednisolone, oral contraceptives, diuretics, or digoxin. Um, so some current uses. Um, there are several preparations that are specific to other countries, including the um, Ankafer blood stopper. Um, this is used in Turkey for management of external hemorrhage and dental surgery bleedings. Um, and then there's another one I didn't put up there called uh, Stronger Neominophagin C, and it's been used by the Japanese for over 40 years in the treatment of hepatitis C. Um, and it's also used in many hand, skin, and body lotions. <coughs> um, as you can see, there's a lot of like Bath and Body Works used it in one product. Um, just some conclusions. It has a variety of usage in um, food and medicine, but there's also a lot of um, evidence for potential medicinal effects, but um, evidence is still inconclusive. And um, licorice is an example of a plant that's small in dose. Uh, in small doses, it's a flavoring. And Medium doses, it's medicinal, and large doses, it can be toxic.